So when the organizers of this TEDx event first reached out to me and asked me, hey, George, do you want to do a TEDx event? I almost immediately said yes. I mean, come on, a TEDx talk? How cool does that sound? But also immediately, I realized a problem. You see, as a regular high school student who just didn't cure cancer nor find a solution to climate change, I didn't know what I could talk about. I, I, on, I mean, granted, I do have many interests and hobbies, but I don't think I'm good enough to talk about them and give you insights. So I was kind of hopeless. And just as I was about to postpone on making that decision, it struck me. I am indeed good and proficient, sometimes too proficient at something. And that something is procrastination. And anyone who knows me well will know, and they will not doubt even the slightest bit on my expertise towards this field. Uh, in fact, the script of this very talk was completed about two hours ago. Um, and I started working on it on the subway uh, coming, to, coming here. So, but that aside, uh, there is uh, a more serious and arguably more important reason as to why I eventually chose procrastination as my topic. And that is, I think there is an overwhelmingly uh, negative sentiment towards procrastination. In fact, I mean, uh, you, you, there is a lot of Chinese audience here. You'll note that the Chinese translation for procrastination contains the very word for disease. And recently, um, a variation of it, which substitutes disease for cancer, has also been gaining wide usage on Chinese social media. Uh, in addition to that, you have countless books, courses, articles, and other resources that aims at uh, curing procrastination. And they, they say, uh, they explain in length how bad procrastination is to you. And they try to teach you myriads of methods and ways and tricks to help you get out of it. And yeah, so over time, it is completely understandable that one becomes worried, if not frightened, by the notion of procrastination. And once they start to see signs of procrastination exhibiting in themselves, they start actively trying to avoid and getting rid of it. Um, but that doesn't usually work out. I mean, show me, uh, by, by a show of hands, how many of you think you are yourself a procrastinator? Exactly. So you know how hard it is to overcome procrastination. So when this doesn't work out, you usually fall into self-doubt and misery. Why am I so bad? Why am I failing at everything in my life? And that, in turn, actually leads to more procrastination, right? So this is a vicious cycle, of course, and we don't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> sorry. And that is a vicious cycle, of course, and we don't want that to happen. Um, but basically, what I'm trying to say is that I wish that we can evaluate uh, procrastination more carefully and with more nuance. But there is a disclaimer that I want to make first, which is that um, I'm not trying to advocate procrastination here to any of you. I'm not trying to say procrastination is such a good thing that we should all have it. Procrastination has brought me tremendous pressure over the years that could have been easily avoidable should I have not procrastinated. I mean, the same goes for you as well, definitely. And um, also, uh, procrastination is definitely not good for anyone's health. Uh, both physical health from pulling one-nighters, all-nighters, and mental health from just dealing with multiple approaching last-minute deadlines. I understand. And frankly, I, I, I really want to be someone who just doesn't procrastinate, who just uh, doesn't have to worry about how many minutes are left before the next deadline approaches, and someone who just, in general, lives an organized and happy life. And from my personal experience, I know people like this do exist. They're not uh, an alien creature that's living in uh, planet Earth. So no, I'm not trying to say that procrastination is good. What I'm trying to say is simply, for those procrastinators out there, I wish that when you, fin when you finish listening to this talk, you can walk away and maybe, just maybe, view your procrastinating habits a little differently. So with that, let's get started. Before my junior year of high school, I sort of had this very interesting uh, work habit. Um, because the workload was generally manageable and uh, you know, I, I don't have to stay, stay really late to finish all my homework, it allowed my habit of procrastination to uh, cultivate. So every night, 
uh, during study hall, I would sit down in front of my desk. I would start to recall, okay, what homework do I have uh, that I need to complete for uh, tonight? And usually it's the ones that are due the very next day. Yet, not for long, um, I would discover a really cool project that someone's working on on the internet, or I would think of this very interesting idea, um, or I would just discover something that is totally irrelevant to my homework. But then I would start working on that. And uh, quickly my attention will be drawn away from my homework, and I would start doing whatever it is. Maybe it's uh, a design tutorial, maybe it's a uh, spacecraft, how to create a spacecraft tutorial. But whatever it is, it's not related to my homework. So, but that worked out fine. I mean, the workload was manageable. So, yes, if you're wondering, I did finish my workload. Uh, I, did finish, I did finish my schoolwork, uh, you know, right before their deadline, of course. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, I probably should have spent more time, you know, perfecting those, uh, just looking over those, checking over details. But you see, I'm a procrastinator. And if I had done that, I would not be standing here talking to you today. And um, most importantly, the fantasies of submitting a perfect work always collapses right before uh, the deadline approaches. But that changed. Uh, and that changed when uh, I entered my junior year of high school and started uh, the IB diploma program, which I'm sure you have heard of. Now, uh, it is a notoriously hard and uh, highly demanding and highly time-consuming um, program. So I told myself, because of that, I told myself, George, you cannot procrastinate further. You have to start organizing the timetable, daily timetables, uh, to, to, to be able to survive through this program. And so I did that. Uh, I adopted a new strategy, uh, which contained two steps. First of all, um, I would actually eliminate and minimize my to-do list to only the ones that I need to do. So basically, it, homework, right? I would, I would strip away those uh, unimportant and uh, distracting tasks, like, uh, I don't know, building a trash bin that can automatically cat categorize a, uh, tra uh, trash garbages. Um, so I eliminated those, and then the second step was that I, I forced myself to not work on any side projects before I, can, I am uh, able to actually finish uh, all my schoolwork. So those are the two steps in my uh, of my strategy. And over time, it did work out somewhat. Um, I say somewhat because I did, uh, I, 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 I have became accustomed to completing everything uh, that, my, that the school requires me to do before actually going on to side projects. But quickly, I also discovered that I didn't like this strategy. Why? Well, you see, the problem was, um, the problem was, first of all, that I realized my efficiency didn't increase simply because I prioritized my schoolwork and eliminated those distracting tasks. The second reason was because um, I actually find myself less efficient and actually completing less things because I adopted the strategy. And it makes sense, because from the increased workload and also the decreased efficiency, you would expect that I will have completed less of the extracurricular activities and side projects that I used to work on, right? So it does make sense. But why was it like this? It, I mean, this strategy sounds like it would make, it would work, right? It sounds, it sounds very sensible. So why? Well, one day, uh, as I was browsing through the vastness of the internet, a book title caught my eye. Uh, it's called The Art of Procrastination, an effective, uh, a, a guide to effective dawdling, uh, lollygagging, and postponing. Now, upon reading it, and yes, despite being a, procrastination, a procrastinator, I do read books, uh, rarely, of course, um, but upon reading it, I discovered that it's not another one of those books and guides that will make you feel bad about yourself after reading this, uh, after finishing it. That is, if you can finish it, of course. Um, but rather, the author John Perry, which is um, uh, an emeritus uh, professor of philosophy at Stanford University, uh, is actually shockingly similar to me in the ways that he procrastinated. And let me, let me explain, right? He provided many different insights to how we should view procrastination, and in particular, a, a special kind of procrastination, which he named structural procrastination. Now, what is structural procrastination, you might ask? Uh, good question. Uh, 
we need to first understand a simple fact. Because a lot of you are, procrastination, uh, are, are procrastinators, you know this. When you procrastinate, you rarely, rarely do absolutely nothing, right? You rarely just sit there and stare into the void, like absolutely doing nothing. Usually, you know, you, you would go do something else. So imagine that everyone has a to-do list, whether it's a mental one or a physical one. But when we have a to-do list, and we usually order the elements, the tasks, for, uh, according to their priority, right? And so it would make sense that we should work, we should start from the very top and work downwards, because the top uh, task is the most important and the most urgent ones. Yet when one procrastinates, this is not what happens. When one procrastinates, one turns to a less important and less urgent task uh, as a way of actually not doing the tasks on the top of that to-do list. That might sound very weird. I'm, like, I'm going to let that sink in. But the most important thing is, most, uh, a lot of procrastinators, and not, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of procrastinators, they are actually capable of completing a more difficult, a more time-consuming time project, a more um, just arduous project uh, or task uh, if it is an instrumental part of avoiding doing something more important. And that, thank you, and that is called structural procrastination. So let me give you an example. Um, say that I have an option to either work on a homework or work on a website that I'm developing, I will almost certainly work on the latter. Because, of course, the homework is much more important, and the website is, of course, more fun. But if, say that I finish the homework, right, and now that all, all, all that I'm left is the website, and all that I can do is the website, well, now it's actually very, very difficult to tell me to get started working on the website because now it has become the most important task on my to-do list. So that is structural procrastination at its peak. And what structural procrastinators do, uh, whether intentional or not, is that they arrange the structure of their tasks to be able to actually do useful and worthwhile things despite their procrastination, and, which is a very interesting thing, right? Um, so they might not be the most effective person to get things done, to get homework done, but still, structural procrastinators are able to get a lot of things done and even give others the illusion that they're very productive and that they can get a lot of things done, which, which, is, which did happen to me, right? Um, yeah. So after having read that book, I looked back, I looked back at my uh, junior year self and I realized that the strategy of minimizing my to-do list was definitely not suitable for me. In fact, I had the wrong uh, assumption that if I have less to do, I will for sure not procrastinate and finish doing them, right? Oh well, no, of course not. Um, so having understood the psychological mechanism of a structural procrastinator, uh, I realized that this strategy was actually in contrary to the very nature of my working habit. You see? Because by minimizing my to-do list, I am eliminating the very most important source of motivation for me, which is the less important tasks down the list. And also, I'm, the remaining tasks are, by definition, the most important tasks. And so, what do I do with the most important tasks? I don't do them. But I have nothing else to do, so I do nothing. So I find myself staring into the blank, staring into the void for minutes, tens of minutes, or even half an hour. And that is definitely not a good use of time. So I've spoken a lot, and maybe you don't agree with everything I said, which is fine. But I do want to end by reemphasizing that I'm not telling anyone to practice, to exercise your self-deception skills and try to persuade yourself that procrastination is such a good virtue that no other mortals can possibly understand. Um, no, I, I'm simply trying to say that procrastination, being simply a manifestation of your various working habits and values that you have, is not the worst ha trait you can possibly possess. And most importantly, a procrastinator can still get a lot of done, a lot of things done, and they can accomplish a lot of things 
uh, given that you arrange the structure of your tasks appropriately, of course. And so with that thought, uh, I really genuinely hope that any of you who are uh, self-doubting uh, because of procrastination can listen to this talk and walk away feeling just a little bit better about themselves, a little more confident, and perhaps they can get a little more done in the future. Thank you.